Welcome to all of you. You're watching Tech24, France 24's tech show. It's Europe's biggest and oldest tech trade shows from Samsung to LG and Amazon. Companies from around the globe are displaying their latest products at IFA 2019. Dan and Jay is on the ground in Berlin, bringing you everything that matters from the event. And we'll talk about augmented identity. Many people in developed countries worry about their privacy, but elsewhere, a billion people still live without any legal identity whatsoever. We tell you how biometrics can give them hope again. The annual IFA Tech trade show in Berlin is currently underway with companies showcasing their latest gizmos and gadgets. And unlike the CS in Las Vegas, IFA is open to the general public, giving it a much more festive vibe. Well, our tech editor, Dan and Jay Cattlecar, is on the ground to tell us everything about it. Hello, Dan and Jay. Hello, Julia. So what are the main tech trains that you've noticed at IFA 2019? Well, the prominent trends at this year's event have been foldable displays and 8K screens with 5G connectivity being a common factor with the two. Now, Samsung launched its much-anticipated foldable phone which when folded has a 4.6 inch display and when unfolded it transforms into a 7.3 inch display which is ideal for reading books, for watching videos and using maps. Now 8K screens were also the flavor of this event. As you know 8K offers four times more clarity than 4K screens as Patrick Monse of Sony explains. Over the last 10 years, TV screens in people's living rooms have been getting bigger and bigger. Because of this, resolution has improved, as you can see here on this 4K high dynamic range. Consumers continue to buy larger TVs, but 4K isn't always compatible with a very big TV screen. So recently, manufacturers have been developing a higher resolution, the 8K, as you can see here. It has four times as many pixels as the 4K, creating a nicer image that looks just as good on a medium-sized screen as on a larger screen. 8K also has increased color depth, which makes the image look more realistic, a window to the world, a total immersion in the image. 8K screens will be released next year, notably at the Summer Olympics in Tokyo. The viewers inside and outside the stadium will have the impression of being closer to the athletes for a more enjoyable experience during the competition. Another Japanese corporation, Sharp, showcased the world's largest 8K uh, screen, which measures 120 inches in diagonal. Now, Sharp is not only developing 8K screens, but an entire 8K ecosystem, which consists of 8K cameras and the use of 5G connectivity to transmit data. Now, both Sony and Sharp are developing these systems, keeping in mind next year's Tokyo Olympic Games, which will be transmitting images in 8K format. Now, we've seen throughout the years that these tech events have put the focus on startups in particular. Have any, you know, innovation from smaller companies, from startups, caught your eye? Well, yes, there have been uh, multiple innovations presented at this year's event in the field of robotics, in the field of encryption and healthcare. But the one startup that really caught my eye is called iSpace. It's based in Luxembourg and it has an ambitious mission of sending a lunar rover by 2023. Now, the company says by 2030, it aims to extract water from the moon's surface and use it to generate uh, fuel like hydrogen and oxygen that will be used for future missions from the lunar surface. Now, another startup, uh, it has an amusing product. It's, uh, it's a harness that can be wrapped around your pet dog. And the, the startup, which is called Inupathy, it claims that it's able to visualize emotions of your dog. Now, this harness essentially is a heart rate monitor, which uh, uh, measures the heart rate of the dog and it corresponds to different emotions. So it can tell with uh, blinking lights, uh, there's a display on the harness, uh, whether the dog is excited, whether it's relaxed or whether it's happy. The tech sector in general is very polluting. So are there any green initiatives? 
Well, yes, one of the initiatives is from the French startup Veritable, which specializes in urban farming. They have provided some innovative solutions to encourage people to grow plants in their homes. Uh, there's another French startup called Klaxon, which specializes in interactive teamwork solutions. And they have also come up with some green initiatives, as Matthew Guyu explains. involved into a lot of sustainable development projects with our clients and today what we are presenting is a new project management method to help to gather ideas and transform these ideas into action to develop the sustainable action into companies we can think about seeing like reduced paper consumption having like beehives on your roof uh, to push people to use more bikes and so using this simple uh, simple project management method you will be able to implement the sections into your organization. Dan, you're really like a kid. I can see that you're already strapped to another gadget. It seems like you're on the tracks of Segway. That's right, I'm at the Segway 9-bot booth. Segway recently launched its kick scooter called the Max G30D, but I'm going to try Segway's go-kart and try to improve my racing skills. Well, we're going to leave it there and let Dan and Jay Cattlecar have fun at IFA 2019. No need for cash, credit cards, or even smartphones. Chinese consumers can now pay for goods by scanning their faces. And while it's set to reduce fraud, it's also expected to put many people out of work. It's also worrying because of what the government intends to do with all this personal data. Claire Rush has this report. Paying with a smile. In this Beijing bakery, customers can make a purchase simply by posing in front of this camera equipped machine. It's a payment method that's on the rise in China, where a growing number of shoppers are leaving their cash and cards at home. I don't even have to bring a mobile phone with me. I can go out and do shopping without taking anything. This self service supermarket chain takes it one step further. The camera scans the faces of those entering this Tianjin store. The facial recognition software then scans faces again at the self-checkout, practically eliminating the need for employees. Supporters of this booming sector say it's not only more convenient, but safer too. Facial recognition technology helps protect our privacy. It's dangerous to enter passwords in the traditional way because if someone is standing next to you, they could see it. But facial recognition payment is different. It really protects our account. While paying in this way is relatively new in China, the technology itself is not. In cities around the country, the government has installed a vast system of surveillance cameras, and many are equipped with facial recognition. Rights groups have opposed the software. They accuse authorities of using it to track and control citizens, especially Uyghur Muslim minorities in the western province of Xinjiang. But the government also uses facial recognition to publicly identify and shame people who break the law. For instance, these people didn't pay for their movie ticket. And we're going to keep on talking about facial recognition. This technology will soon be everywhere. Your face will unlock your car and computer, and it will pay the bills. But while many people in developed countries now worry about privacy issues regarding this data, in developing countries it's a whole other story. Many are actually suffering from the lack of digital legal identity, which bars them from many public services. Well, to talk more about this, I'm joined in the studio by Antoine Grenier, who's the senior VP at, of the African region at IDEMIA. Thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Thank you very much for having me today. So, uh, first of all, let's talk about the issue of these so-called anonymous people. There's the staggering number, 200 million Chinese people and an estimated 100 million Nigerians are today without a legal identity. What does it mean and what problems do they face today? That means typically that you don't legally exist if you don't have a legal identity. You don't have a birth certificate and in front of authorities, governments, corporations, you do not have any means of proving you, who you are. You don't have an identity. So you cannot uh, get access to property, you cannot get access to education, healthcare, social services, you cannot open a bank account. You can, every, li every day's life action that we do, naturally, it's a problem. So how can a company like IDEMIA help all of these people? What, what kind of programs are you rolling out? Well, we put in place uh, big programs uh, in countries where uh, the, the uh, uh, 
civil uh, registry does not exist or is incomplete to uh, enroll the population, to fully enroll the population within a few months. We can enroll several million people in a country. And then to provide credentials, identity credentials. It can be an, ID, an identity document, it can be a unique identity number, as it is the case in India, for instance, so that people have control the mean of uh, being able to prove who they are. This is what we call augmented identity. Augmented identity is being able to prove who you are and making sure that nobody else than you can do so. So you claim that this technology will really open the way to a world, a more inclusive world, a more democratic world. But on the other hand, we see a lot more people who are very concerned also about what will happen with their personal data, what governments, what business will be doing with that data. We just saw that in the report just earlier. Um, what's your take on this? And do you think there's enough regulation today on what's being done with facial recognition, for instance? The, the, the European regulation is clearly the more stringent when it comes to uh, data protection, privacy. Uh, we are a European company and we have been working on our products and technology since day one to make sure that our products and our technology meets uh, these, these requirements. The principle behind it is very simple, making sure that the, the individual controls master his data. Typically, if you have uh, biometric information in uh, a smartphone or in a document, a passport, um, so for instance, we make sure that the information is kept within your control on your smartphone on your document and not share with anybody else. And the only transaction that can be done is to make sure that you are uh, from a picture that is taken from you if it's facial recognition or for fingerprint if it's uh, fingerprint recognition, uh, you, are, you have a match on the information that is in your, uh, in your possession. So it's clearly making sure that the information is kept under control by the person who owns it. Antoine Grenier, the Senior VP of the Africa Region at IDEMIA, thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you very much. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech24, but you can watch it again on our website, france24.com. See you next time.